Good evening. With it being after 7 p.m., the Wednesday, March 27, 2024, Conservation Commission meeting will come to order. First order of business will be the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the Public service announcement, live coverage of the March 27th, 2024 Conservation Commission meeting, meeting will be on the CAMED channel, Comcast channel 6, Verizon channel 28. This will just apply to the live coverage of the meeting. All subsequent replays of the meeting will air as always on GovCam. How dare I do, all right? All right. The uh, minutes from February 28th and March 13th uh, I have read them. I've read the, the minutes and the revisions. If anybody wants to make a motion, or if not, I'll make the motion. Well, I, I can move, move that uh, we adopt the, the meeting minutes for both meetings. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? They're being done. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, and that's unanimous. <coughs> Certificates of Compliance 2421753, 247 Chickering Road, Enterprise Bank. Hello. So, for the record, my name is Sarah Simon. I'm with Greenman Peterson Inc., and I'm here on behalf of my client, Enterprise Bank, who's petitioning for the certificate of compliance for 247 Chickering Road. And Amy just pulled up the as built plan. We've certified that it has been satisfactorily completed per the approved plans, and we've provided all other documentation per the order of conditions and a wetland plantings report. So with that, I'll take any questions or any give, a, other. give us a minute, stay right there. Amy? Yeah, so the order was issued in June of 2019 and it governed demolition of existing two-story building, paved parking and other site features. Redevelopment consisted of construction of a new 3,200 square foot, one-story building, um, for a bank and a drive-through with associated grading, paving, parking, uh, and stormwater management areas. Um, portions of the project were in the buffer zone and there was restoration of the 25-foot no disturb zone. Um, work is complete. The bank has been in operation for a while and erosion controls are removed. The order required a stone wall at the 25-foot no disturb zone and approximately 35 uh, native shrubs to be planted and, and then seeded. Um, stone wall and wetland markers are installed. The plantings have been doing very well for at least a couple of years now, so that's very well established. Um, stormwater management consists of catch basins, subsurface infiltration chambers, and uh, filtera tree wells. Um, GPI has provided uh, documentation of their O&M and inspection. They're in your packets. And let's see. And snow, snow signage has been installed, and I observed no outstanding issues, so I'd recommend issuing a full and complete COC with ongoing conditions. Okay. Joe? So, um, very well done. I do have one thing I'd like to bring back to the client. Mm -hmm. It drives me crazy in the okay. summertime. Every single time it's raining in the morning when I go to work, their sprinkles are on. Oh. Have, them fix the okay. rain. Have them fix the rain gauge. It drives me nuts. Okay. <laughs> I'll I can talk to the client, yes. I have no questions. No questions. How are the trees and the tearing and so They look good. Um, we just received photos from the maintenance people cleaning them out, and they seem like they're doing really well. Good, good. I got I'm all set. Motion. I would move that we grant the compliance for 242-1753. Second. With our ongoing uh, O&M. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? There being none, any, any about us want to be heard? None. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. NACC number 240, 505 Sutton Street, Sutton Street Development, for a certificate. Yeah. 
Good evening. Uh, my name is Alex Loth. I am here representing uh, Sutton Street Redevelopment, the developer of the project at 495 507 511 Sutton Street, which was formerly known as 505 Sutton Street. Um, the work is complete, was completed last year. Um, plantings, etc., uh, all done. Um, as built's been delivered. Uh, Amy's been out to inspect the site and we are here to ask for the certificate of compliance for the project and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about it. Please hold on. Okay, so uh, the order was issued in October of 2019 under the bylaw only for an off-site isolated vegetated wetland. Um, the project consisted of uh, demolishing of an existing building and related utilities and constructing of a three building 136 unit multifamily apartment complex with associated um, grading, utility, stormwater management, patios, walkways, and landscaping. Uh, work occurred within the buffer zone, um, but the 25 was respected. Um, the order required a field stone wall to be installed at that edge, and that was done towards the very, very beginning of before they even um, started work in earnest. Um, in front of that field stone wall is a stockade fence. So you um, can't even see it anymore, but it's there. Um, I had asked for documentation that uh, stormwater BNPs ha had been uh, inspected and cleaned at the back of your packets for this. We have um, the uh, contractors, um, daily report, and also an invoice from May of last year um, indicating um, that cleaning had been done. And then we have uh, the project engineer's certification letter and also um, noting that the stormwater management um, structures were function or functioning as designed and I'll add um, it's not in your packet but the town has which and I think you have Amy the contract between the development and okay. the engineering firm for the ongoing inspections of that system um, the next one being scheduled for sometime in April So I just recommend uh, issuing a full and complete COC with ongoing conditions. Okay. Yep. Come back to me for a second, if you don't mind. Um, is, um, is annual inspection or annual cleaning of catch basins and things like that, is that, Part is that of typical the, yes. for us? Yes. Because it seems or, like they're on an annual schedule. Right yes. Now. A reporting, let's put it that way. Yeah. yeah. That and that's part of the O&M yes. to do that. I'm all set. No questions. Um, I, I see we have receipts and stuff for maintenance of facilities, but I know in each O and M plan in the back of it, there's a log for how often maintenance takes place. Has that been filled out? Uh, I don't think I have that. And also the schedule that's going to be. I mean, that, that's what I usually expect to see on the Oh, okay. As a person that makes those swift plans, I'd like to know if logs are used by somebody. <laughs> They're intended to. <laughs> yeah, the O and M does have the the logs. Okay. Um, so we could probably need to nudge them to use them. Yes, very much. So. Okay. And then that that keeps them on the same schedule that they're right. supposed to be on too. Nothing else. Does the O&M have the frequency of cleanings required? Because typically it's mm. more often than once a year. Yeah, cash patients. So are you bi-yearly twice yeah. a year? Yes, uh, yes. It's set up as October and April. October and April. Yep. Okay. You, okay. But the last time they were cleaned was May? The last time they were cleaned it was May, to my knowledge. My, I believe that why that happened is in October we were just you know, wrapping up and finishing up because we were finishing that last building into July and August. So, given the rain we've had, I've imagined there's a bit of silt accumulation in there. So, let's get that done. Absolutely. 
And let's, let's make sure that the O and M plans are followed. Yeah. Well, does the uh, O and M plan require six month uh, cleaning of that system? Okay. And what, what was the what, what did you want done with the logs? I, this the O and M plan out. has logs on the back. I'd like them to be used. We'll make that. As <laughs> it usually lists every structure. Yep. So then you can kind of check it off and yeah. have a. Gotcha. That the client should use those logs in order to pay the bill. That's what you hired them to do. Yes. <laughs> so they really not necessarily verify that the work was actually yeah, done, just that they paid the bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Let's see. Um, sweeping of paved areas. Uh, March and November. Deep sump catch basins um, inspected annually to check oil buildup and outlet obstructions. Uh, deep sump catch basins shall be inspected twice a year and cleaned when accumulated sediments exceed two, in, two feet. Two feet. Um, the yeah, so that all the timings for all the BMPs are in here. Do they have the requirements up, but the, the, the log itself is not filled out, correct? Right. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, do they have um, evidence of inspection within six months? Of um, I didn't get that. I got the May. Of May. The yeah. May, right. There. I would have to look and see if there was an inspection done after the May, um, I know we were looking at them, but whether we had, you know, an engineer actually do an inspection of them, I'd have to look for the paperwork. Yeah, I was, I was looking for it, unfortunately, at the last minute today and found the receipts from the May, but um, it may be that because we were just finishing up that we didn't do one in the fall. I know the yeah. property was swept in the spring, um, you know, for sand, et cetera, as you would at the end of the, the snow plowing season, um, and the catch, catch basins were cleaned in May, uh, but I don't have to hand tonight any evidence of a fall inspection. Like I said, they're coming out in the next few weeks for the April inspection and cleaning as necessary. We could just defer this till they, till they get to cleaning in April. Because they're not compliant right now. As far as we know. Yep. Right. No, we don't have an inspection report from six months ago, or, or six months from May of last year. Division web so what I'm seeing on Busby's invoice, they do enumerate in code AD1, AD2, AD3. I'm sure they, I'm sure they coincide with structures that are in that O&M plan. If you could correlate those to the O&M plan, it tells you what it is they did on you know part of that May 31st report. It looks to me like this. This reads: This is the final cleanup before they leave the site. It's not necessarily part of O and M. Yeah, it's just your final cleanup. That. Yeah, so it sucks. So that's what that's, this looks like. Um, but it may it may suffice. It may be that they hit all those structures that are required, and and then also reported what came out of it was only a total of one point five cubic yards. And in fact, they hired another firm to take it away and dispose of it. Oh, okay. So there may be enough information here, but we just have to break through the code. In the future, getting the log is imperative. We need that. Yeah, okay. And, and where our jurisdiction is so little, that's what I was, I, I paused to come yeah. back because I was trying to remember it's really just the south end of the site. It was off site. We required that they build a wall yep. around it, yep. semicircular wall yep. to protect it. There were a lot of a butter, NIMBY participation in the process, yep. but we addressed that process properly, I thought. Yep. The only thing I thought was hanging out was. We had no participation in the stormwater management at all, correct? Because none of the discharges were coming to our areas. That was all done by the planning board, right? Yes. Our zoning board. Yes. Was, this, was this? So ultimate went discharges. Both. But planning board eventually. It was planning board? Yeah. Yep. Ultimate discharges at the northeast of the site, right? Yes, that's correct. Right, so that's what I'm saying. None of the drainage came our way. It all went back out to Sun Street and yeah. even diverting it away yes. from Chickering Road. So I, I don't think we had any any concern with stormwater in that area. Right. 
because I, I thought the reporters I was kind of quiet on the stormwater piece, but it's it's only because we had nothing coming into our jurisdiction, and I don't think right, we exactly. and I don't think we participated in the analysis of that. I don't think so. So what we're saying is that what we were jurisdictional of was that offsite wetland only. They protected it, which is the only thing we required, yeah, right. and that the right. O and M plan is something that does carry between yeah. both conservation. So as long as we get that report, we're complete. Even though it was a complicated, large project with a lot of unique stormwater things that were going right. on, none of it was in our jurisdiction. No, no, they weren't. None of the structures were. You know, that handled but the O&M plan was incorporated into it, the yes, order of conditions. Yes. Okay, so. Yeah, so. so that's the only piece, it's just the O&M. Yeah. As, long, as long as we get that documentation that says that they've, everything that's spelled out in the plan, if it correlates to the right. invoice, then they're probably okay. Yeah. So I think if we could just take this advisement for the next meeting, but it's, and if the, we need more, we can ask, ask for more. Okay. But I think we may have that on that Busby invoice if they want to break it out and, and compare it. Yeah. Under advisement, or should should they just request a continuance to the next meeting? Yeah. Yeah. If if what you're looking for, if uh, sort of summarize what I think I heard, um, is because six months has elapsed from the last time these were inspected and cleaned, you'd like to see them inspected, cleaned, with the log filled out yep. before uh, you go for the um, final yeah. certificate of compliance. Is that correct? understand it yes yes, yes. yes. Yeah. okay well then i'd yeah. respectfully request a continuance to your next meeting to get that done so that that's going to be april 10th is that enough time yes yeah okay motion so moved second motion and a second any further discussion there being none all those in favor say aye aye, aye. Opposed, and that's unanimous Thanks. see you in two weeks thank you. thank you appreciate it and um Scott Cameron should have the logs, or you should have the logs. Yes. Okay. All right. Great. All right. Okay. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. For for nine twenty two Dale Street, I have to recuse myself. I do work for Mr. McCarthy at his at his property, so someone else will have to call the plays. I'll just sit back. You guys want to do it? Bet you want to do it. So we don't want to move chairs at all. Just grab the gavel. All right. <laughs> all right. So uh, next item, 922 Dale Street. Good evening. My name is Joe McCarthy, 922 Dale Street, as just noted. I'd like to start off a, a little different. Just uh, one second, uh, because I'm just following our chair's routine. First we hear from our administrator, and then we'll go through, and then we go to you, if that's okay. Good enough. They Thank like you. My introduction. That's the way I've seen it from the past. All right. All right. Um, so the commission will recall issuing a negative number three determination in November of 2023 for the demolition of a barn annex. Uh, this work is complete. The exposed ground under the demolished barn annex is a depressed area, approximately 1,200 square feet or so, with a decent drop off uh, from the surrounding grade. The applicant wishes to level the depression with approximately 20 cubic yards of topsoil to match adjacent grades and slope, slope gently to the limit of the 50 foot no build zone. So no work is in the, in the no build zone. So it's 60 feet, um, roughly 60 feet or so. Uh, and then seed this area with a native seed mix. Uh, existing erosion controls from when the barn was removed are still there. Um, the last I saw them, they looked okay, but we can always require, you know, um, refreshing if, you know, the winter did a number on them. Um, so basically, it's it's a it's a grading um, project outside the 50. Um, I had suggested that if there's no outstanding questions or concerns, the commission could close the hearing and issue a negative number three determination with conditions that require pre-construction meeting with the contractor, making sure erosion controls are adequate, um, talking about sources for the top so soil uh, to be canvassed for any occurrence of the Asiatic jumping worm in the attempt to avoid import to the site and then erosion controls needing to stay until the seed mix is fully um, vegetated. 
So. Thank you. Yeah. Joe. I do recall the commission issuing a negative three determination, but I also recall me voting against it that this was a RDA, not an RDA, that this was an NOI, and I raised questions about having to regrade everything around it. What you were going to do, and the answer was nothing. Jeez. Five months later, here we are. This was an NOI. Yeah. This was an NOI. I raised the question. He's asking exactly the points we raised back in November. I'm all set. Can I uh, respond to that? Um, just, if you could, sir, just, just hold on to your thoughts and... We'll go around pretty pretty quickly. Mr. McCarthy. Um, Amy, I just have a question for you, actually, about the, the Asian, Asiatic yeah. jumping worm. Um, what does that entail for the, uh, well, the testing? That it's really um, looking for the worms themselves um, because you can't see the eggs. They're brown and Do they're the size of the Do you hire someone to screen the dirt or um, something? Or? Well, I, I'm, no, I, I don't know enough about that, but in terms of looking at your source and looking for the worms, I mean, they're all over the place. <laughs> and so um, if we okay, can make so any looking, attempt to, to... What are we looking for from the applicant in order to use soil to do what he wants to do is it well, uh, I would say to um, directly work for their work with their whoever's going to provide the topsoil to provide some sort of evidence that they've inspected it for the worms and if they haven't found certification them, by by the anyone in particular at oh. like a qualified Botanist or yeah. not botanist? But no. Insect, whatever yeah. you would call an insect expert. Um, okay. Good question. I, you know, I know it raises well. Their okay. their behavior is easy to detect. They're very they they behave very differently than a regular earthworm. So. Um, okay. That's. I don't know. Is it something it's, that can be applied to the soil? even if they are there just to eradicate them? Not that I know of yet. You can um, do a mixture of uh, dry mustard and water to make them come up out of it. I don't think it kills them, but I think it irritates them and makes them come up to the surface. But that's, do you, are you aware of any? There's no widely known methods for controlling them yet. Just doing your best to prevent it, they recommend if you're going from site to site, thoroughly cleaning your shoes and disinfecting any gear because their eggs are so small. Um, I don't know if when we require certified clean fill for other sites, if that includes heating it. I know heating it to a certain temperature can kill the eggs, but I don't know if that's something that yeah, I don't know. So I think one is reasonable. By talking about the Asiatic jumping yeah. worm, I think what we really ought to say is the soils must be procured from a reputable source. Okay and known to be free of invasive species, whether they be vegetable or animal, so to that effect. <laughs> because we're, why we're not yeah, talking about knotweed? Why we're not yeah. talking about fragmites? No, no, the other stuff right, that comes right, in soils. Right. You're right. Good point. Just make sure it's clean from a reputable place and give us a bill of lading so we know in the future if that, if it's found, we can go after the firm and take, like, you know, no future deliveries to, yeah. the, to the town from your source. I mean, does that satisfy? It, it seems overly broad, but I think those were too specific to go after one thing that may be no way to deal with it. Yeah, I don't have any solution. I'm not all that familiar with the, the pretty Asiatic typical of jumping worms. Right. What's that? What's that? So that's pretty typical of an earthworks back, exactly what he said. Yeah. Screen and free of any invasive species. Mm -hmm. I've been in contact with uh, Peter Green on that, uh, that topsoil already. And it's not, it's not much. By the way, it's, uh, it's actually less than 1,200 square feet. It's, it's smaller than this area here. Uh, and when I was here uh, in the fall for the IDA to take down part of the barn, because it was falling apart, it was unsafe. Uh, there was a crawl space underneath. It looked fine to me. But uh, when the barn was removed, 
this is. You can pass it around. What you see. Uh, it's an I eyesore. I saw the pictures you passed around when you came to first. Yeah, I don't first know what you have in the brochure. I, I, so. I knew uh, this it's, was coming. It's, it's, it, it's an eyesore, but even more important, it's a breeding ground for mosquitoes. And my five-year-old grandson... I'm, I'm not saying no. I'm, what I'm saying is process. The process is, is, is not what it should have been back then. But we're there now and, and just come back to roost. And you know, it's one of the few opportunities I get to sit there and say, I told you so. It's, um, it's not it's matter exactly the case. Us. <laughs> so, so I, I guess I would change, or I would, I would request um, a change in one of the conditions. The, the last, uh, the last sentence of the first bullet. Okay. Sources for the topsoil shall be certified, certified. to be free of any invasive Asiatic species. jumping worm invasive. and invasive. Species. species yeah. Animal or vegetable? <laughs> there you go. No. More scientific, but. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> All right, I have no other questions. Sorry. Flora or fauna? Any rub? Um, no, nothing else. I agree. Should have been in a while. An earthwork was coming. Anytime you're going to take out a crawl space, that's. Next. You assume it's going to happen. I'm all set, thank you. I don't have any questions. Um, do I hear a motion? Well, I move that we close this hearing and issue a negative three determination with the conditions as discussed. Second? Anybody? Second. No second? Discussion? All those in discussion. Any discussion? Is uh, the condition, one of the conditions is free to inspect the existing erosion control? Yes. Okay. Before work? Before work. Oh, yeah, work absolutely. Done? Yes. Okay. I'll meet with the contractor okay, and good. make sure that's good. good. Pretty standard. Any other discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. The ayes have it. Joe opposed. I turn it back over to you, Mr. Manzi. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Councilor. Right about that, Joe. We're going to put the demo next time. That's just an expression. Under IDAs, we have 60 Raleigh Tavern Lane, Rogers. Um, so we received a request for continuance to the April 10th hmm. meeting for that. 60 okay, Raleigh request Tavern. to continue 60 Raleigh Tavern Lane made by the applicant. We're looking for our April 10th. So moved. Second. Motion a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. That's unanimous. It's continued. 18 to 20 Johnson Street, Rosenberg. Is it only two? Okay. All right. I represent Neil Rosenberg. One, one, one second, okay? Just one second. We, we like to let. Uh, okay. <laughs> we like to let Amy lay it out there, and anyway. it may save you from having to say anything. Oh, great! <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this project entails replacing an existing rotted wooden picket fence along the bank of an intermittent stream and in the buffer zone. Um, a portion of which, the bank of the stream, a portion of which is formed by a, re a stone retaining wall. Uh, there is a culvert that daylights on the left side of the house at 1820 Johnson after moving water underneath Johnson Street and then outlets directly into the stream. The current rotting fence also acts as a guardrail to protect people from the eight foot vertical drop to the stream bed. Um, the vertical drop is the face of the retain stone retaining wall um, and it stretches out to the rear of the house. Uh, as it exists, the deteriorating, the deteriorating fence presents a safety hazard. Um, all of the digging for fence posts will be done by hand uh, with the post hole digger as noted in the narrative. The narrative also states that uh, any soil spoils um, will be stored in barrels during the construction uh, and all the excess excavated material will be removed from the site when the project is complete. Um, 
I had the applicant provide a waiver request only because it's in the 25, but it's on top of this retaining wall. So um, I think that the fence is necessary considering the eight foot drop. Uh, I don't think there's a lot of uh, alternatives. If you, ha if you tried to move the fence out of the 25, then you're leaving that retaining wall drop exposed and ready for someone to fall in. So I recommended that you close the hearing and issue a negative three determination uh, requiring a pre-construction meeting with the contractor um, and ensure that the storage barrels are on site and in good condition. Um, spreading of loam and grass seed over any exposed soils if necessary to make sure it revegetates on the areas of um, post holes and a post construction meeting to verify compliance. So it's about 150 linear feet of fence that is going to be it's replaced. It's also historic, so this is the first step, and we go through whole set of historical. So. Yeah, so it, it runs along frontage of, of Johnson at the sidewalk. So. Joel, no questions? Yeah, this could be a small project, but it would have required a waiver, so it's an RDA, That's, so it yeah. uh, uh, looks fine. I have no questions. No questions? Sure, the historical commission is going to weigh on this. Well, what kind of fence are you planning on putting there? Uh, PVC, the same look. Okay. Um, I, I did touch base in the fall with Ryan Charenda. Um, his comment was, "I wish you just did it." <laughs> but uh, he, you know, he's he, I'll run it by him and you know go through the process. But um, you know, the house itself, you look at it. It's got cement siding, it's got PVC trim. We're trying to replicate the exact same thing just in PVC instead of wood so that it looks the way it's supposed to but doesn't rot. I think that'll look good. No questions. No questions. Maybe I have a question for you. Does this, an IDA, does this require a waiver? I notice there's an alternative analysis done. Yeah, just, well, just because I knew you were going to ask me because it was in the, it, the fence is a, in the 25. Quite a wordy uh, alternatives analysis. <laughs> yeah. No alternatives. Well, I think, yeah, I know. So so it's it does require slope. a waiver? What's that? It's top of slope, but you don't put it halfway down the slope. That's the alternative. Yeah, it's you a straight replacement. So. So, it so, is, yeah. replacement in kind. So to keep, the record, to keep the record clear, we should just move a waiver first yeah. and, and yeah. Uh, so we're, we're ready to hear the motion. I move that we grant the waiver. Uh, there are no other alternatives. Second. Motion is second. Discussion? Did none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. The waiver is approved. And now we need a motion to complete the IDA. Close, so close the hearing close and the issue hearing. Yeah. a negative three with conditions. Close and issue. With the condition stated. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion? None. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That is unanimous. See if I saved you some words. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Tim, for So, coming. Amy, on, um, I'll go through historical and then I'll just touch base okay. with you before and I'll you. get that permit to you just so sure. if historical needs it, they know. Okay. Appreciate it. Okay, great. Thank Thanks you. for coming. Thanks very much. Okay, we move on to notices of intent. I notice a lot of yellow on the, on the roster here, so let's uh, we'll take them one at a time. 2421876. 492 Sutton Street, Lawrence Airport, continued from 228. Request to continue to 41024. So moved. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Discussion. There, there was discussion. something that we received product. So we, yes. Since so, the last meeting that yes. we, we probably need to take and a position today, on and, dis and discuss. And today we received Stantec's res response to our peer review's first letter, okay. comment letter. So, so we're making progress on what it is we yes. said. But there's been something else interjected laterally on us that we we've yet to form. We haven't right. seen it formally. Right, and that's a that's a an analysis that Hancock, who is the engineer for the downstream of Butter at Charles Street, mm -hmm. they did um, sort of a watershed analysis um, that's sort of in a holding pattern because it's not part of our third-party peer review scope. So I didn't want to start racking up a bill without making sure 
so it's something that the commission reviews and that's probably going to be at the next meeting historically we wouldn't discuss or review anything right. until third party review had it had sounded off on that's what i'm saying we've made progress on what it is that we've charged right. there's something else been interjected into right that's exactly that, that is not yet that on is, the table right. so do you need a motion from this commission to send the new whatever you received to send it to third party now well, and not wait till the next meeting i have a position on that we have an abutter yeah. who's hired their own experts who's performed their own analysis yeah unique situation I don't think we've ever seen before but I why should the applicant or why should we pay to have that reviewed I think if the abutter wishes to have submit their analysis as, as evidence that they should agree to third-party review well, that's and actually, they should pay that, for it that's actually exactly how the bylaw reads the third-party review is paid for by the applicant but right, no. but the applicant may this not agree, so we can't start spending so, anybody's money. No, but this this third this third party of butter that's got their own. Right, they they would have the same status as an applicant. They should be paying for the review of their product. I don't think they have. We have any standing to have them do that. Uh, well, I don't think yeah. we have the ability to do that. Well, w without a review, uh, this thing isn't going to move. Well, I do think you were right that. Um, if, if something has been brought to our attention, just like if there was a statement from somebody here and we needed it to be reviewed by the third party review entity, we would send it to them, whether it's in report form or information that we got at a public hearing. So I, I think you were right on the nose. So it needs yeah. to go, but so the question is that, the question is the who's going to so pay? I think the applicant. We have new information that's brought in front of us. If they want their project allowed, then. But we need, to we need to see it yes. and see if it is worthy of Agreed. the yes. third party reviewer Absolutely. reviewing it. Yeah. Yeah, I introduced yeah. it tonight because I want to be aware because we're going to get it's going to be sprung upon us in probably the next meeting. Do we want, want to do be, that though? You guys be do thinking about how this is going to all play out. Do we, do we want to um, introduce uh, okay. that? We, w we shouldn't be taking any votes tonight right. because this is continued. Right. Okay. Looking for a way to advise the, the we applicant or whoever. We haven't voted to continue. They've requested as a motion second and on discussion. True. We're, 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 on dis we're on discussion. No, I get it. But we're on discussion of a, of a continuance request. What I'm trying to clear up so that we can save two weeks or more is you have a document that's been submitted to you? From Hancock, yep. It's, it's from Hancock, and they represent a third party. A butter downstream, a butter okay. at Charles Street. That, my my opinion is that that has to be reviewed before this commission, or the commission can look at it first and then send it to review. It's just going to waste more time. But I mean, either way is correct. So, whatever the commission, whatever the majority of the commissioners want to do now is what it comes down to. Doesn't it need to get entered into public record during a meeting first before it yeah. goes to third party? I think it should. This is okay. A very I, I know that would yeah. delay no. everything, and that's no, no, not, that's fine. We're that, not looking to do that, that obviously. But to. okay, no, no, I, I, I understand that. So, because we're on a continuance vote, and because we have not opened publicly the document that's right. being referred to. I don't think it's a matter of opening it. I think it's once it's been accepted by us as part of the record, then you can do what you want with it. But it's not yet. But it hasn't been. I mean, okay, so all we're doing is continuing. All we're doing is continuing right now. Yeah. And and the, no action will well, be. Yeah, with, with no action and, and if what I can send signals to the applicant that this report from Hancock may be something the commission wants third party peer review for. Right. So that they're prepared for a possible request of that, and then they can respond whether they agree to pay for it or I, I not. Did. We I want to review the. See, see, I have a problem. Review? I have a problem. Why wouldn't we just let the Hancock come up here and tell us what he thinks? That's my position on it, because I'm afraid that they they could easily throw a red herring. It's happened before, not by this particular firm, but maybe maybe so. I don't want to simply get a voluminous report in of the report said to be their way and the only way to do it, only to send it out at the applicant's request or, or their expense, or worse yet, at our expense, when the reality is, well, let's so see what it says, because so maybe it's junk. So yeah. then the right thing to do, Joe, it's not opening tonight. Do we intend to put it on for the next meeting? 
it's, it's running agenda items. So, is 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 it your intention to put it on for the next meeting? Oh, it's going to be part of your. If okay, we're so, going to discuss it at the next meeting, it will be. So part as long of as it's been packets. submitted timely, five days before the next meeting, it's, oh, yeah. it's you have it timely. Yep. You once you once you post it to the agenda, you've got to publish it to all parties. Yeah. Prior to the meeting. Yep. Okay, that's what we'll do. That's it. So, so, sounds like you guys solved it. Uh, so we have a motion and a second. We're on discussion to continue. Any further discussion? Any abutters that want to be heard on this project? Well, we shouldn't, Not we shouldn't be asking. I shouldn't be asking on a continuance? No, because, because the intention we're not was, receiving. The intention was to continue. I just wanted to interject so we know that this is coming. Yes. And I yes. think I think Stan, since it's now received by the office, I think Stantec's entitled to see that report. Everybody, everybody, all, everybody on I the roster. Stantec they're in possession of Everybody on the roster is entitled yeah. now. Okay, all those in favor of continuance, say aye. 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 Opposed, that's unanimous. Okay. That was the hardest continuance I've ever had to work with. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had one like that before. I see they got a half million dollar grant today from the state for erosion control and stormwater. Nice. Okay. Uh, also, we'll request to continue 2421884 49 Court Street. So request to continue to 410 24. So moved. Second. Motion and second discussion. None. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. <coughs> 416 Abbott Street. Request to continue to 410 24. So moved. Second. Motion and second discussion. None. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that is unanimous. Looking to not continue, but rather be heard. 2421886 Stephen Street, right away, culvert, north end of a DPW. Amy, if you would be so kind as to introduce the project and then. Sure. You guys may get away with not having to speak. Let's see how it works, that. okay? No, I doubt that. We're going to let Amy start it off and then we'll work down the table. Okay. All righty. Sort of a lengthy rundown here. Lengthy? Yep. All right. No way to make it uh, brief. Well, okay. So there's this is a culvert repair project, and there and it's at um, Steve, Stephen Street between um, Stevens Pond and Mill Pond. There's a twin 48 inch RC culvert pipes. Uh, with associated uh, concrete slabs, stone masonry head walls, which are deteriorating. Um, and there's going to be a section of the roadway that's going to receive a full depth reclaim and repave. And then the remaining sections of the roadway from all the way to Harkaway and then the other side to Pleasant Street will receive a mill and overlay. New uh, steel guardrails will be installed. New French drains will be installed parallel along Stephen Street in the Harkaway direction to abate stormwater ponding and create better conveyance. Um, work is within Inland Bank, land under water bodies waterway, uh, and bordering land subject to flooding, the 100-year floodplain, and 100-foot buffer zone. For bank, um, there is 215 feet of linear impact that will be replaced um, that linear footage exceeds the allowable 50 linear feet or 10 percent of the bank under regular under the uh, typical um, performance standards for bank therefore the applicant is requesting a limited project status under the guise of um, the culvert and headwall work provisions in the state regulations. Um, they note that approximately 53% of the bank consists of the culvert pipes themselves and the surrounding headwalls and concrete slabs. Uh, they are requesting a waiver from the requirement of performing a wildlife habitat uh, evaluation. Um, the existing twin culvert pipes are in good shape except for the seams or the, the joints that are um, 
not tight. So what they're proposing to do is um, repair with a cured in place pipelining for those. They have done a hydrologic and hydraulic analysis um, because that lining will decrease the pipe's diameters by point, 0 0.5 inches. Let's see, the other uh, wetland resources uh, include land under water bodies and waterways. Um, 4,500 square feet of land under water uh, will be temporarily disturbed, which is below the 5,000 foot threshold for that resource area. And um, this footprint is the max, so they decided to show the maximum extent uh, of the area where the coffer dams would be installed, but it may very well shrink based on um, the contractor's uh, preference. Bordering land subject to flooding, flooding the 100-year floodplain um, consists of the roadway, the roadway shoulders, and there is going to be approximately 15,000 square feet of temporary alterations, all of which will be replaced in kind at the same elevations. And that, that is also um, the applicant is requesting a limited project for that resource area. The trigger, uh, the 15,000, there's a 5,000 square foot threshold for this resource area. So the 15,000 square feet is over that threshold, triggering the need for a wildlife habitat valuation. Uh, but the applicant is requesting a waiver from that requirement as well. That's it in a nutshell. Ty and Bond are here this evening, so we can have them introduce themselves and then. You guys can fill in gaps because I'm sure there's plenty well, hold of gaps. On. Let me, let me, let's, let's flesh out some questions real quick. All right, well, let's ha have them introduce, introduce themselves. So we, know who, so we know who you are? Yes, okay. hi, thank hi. you. Um, thank you, Amy. I'm Julia Novotny, yeah. environmental scientist at Time Bond. I'm Matt Coughlin, I'm a project manager and uh, senior engineer. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. You guys can sit and have your own mics if oh, you want. Okay. It might be better. <laughs> sit down, relax. It'll take us just a couple minutes. We'll come up with some questions, maybe. <laughs> Joseph. Not a big project, but a complicated project. Um, you're going to leave, make sure I understand, you're going to leave the existing coverage in place. You're going to cough a dam and dewater. We'll talk about that in a little detail later. Once it's dewatered, you're going to go in and do some preparation work in the pipes themselves, and then you're going to line them. What's that line up? What is, what is it? It's a cured in place pipe, um, so it's like a resin uh, that um, I think you essentially put like a sock through it and you, you pull the resin material through. Um, and yeah, so the they would have to prepare, the, the concrete material is actually in pretty good shape. There was, a, I think, a dive inspection that was done. Um, so that's in pretty good shape. The pipes are just um, sections have, have separated a little bit. So like, you know, when traffic drives over, uh, some sediment move coming through them was, noti was noted. So uh, the yeah the, the pipes themselves would stay. Um, the dewatering uh, within the cofferdam to that level would just be for the cured in place uh, pipe aspect. They would clean the pipe first, um, and then and then do the the cured resin. So like we got a situ form type of process, but on a larger diameter. Exactly. Yeah, I think in situ form is one of the companies. Yep, that, that does that. Exactly. Yep. So it's, like it's all set up and prep, and really the actual process is pretty darn quick. So it's all done in place. It's e the fact that there's water mains and sewer mains running perpendicular to it are Im immaterial. They're simply there. Right. You're not digging anything. That's right, yeah. Um, I think because of the size of the pipe, um, it, it may take a little bit longer for it to cure before um, the copper dams can be removed, the water can be put back in place. So like, you know, whereas typically that might be a, a very quick process, I don't want you to think it'll be like, you know, a couple hours. It might. It might be longer because of the size, um, but yeah, generally, as soon as that's cured, um, you know, the, the water could be restored. Um, so I understand the process pretty pretty well. Yep. So let's talk about coffee damming and dewatering and control of background flows when all that happens. 
when the big storm comes and you have a gigantic watershed upstream. You can't pump around that. No, right. you're, not, you're not pumping 1,500 gallons a minute when you need to move 10 times that. Right. So what do, you, what do you have? Are you going to draw Mill Pond and Stevie's Pond down? And are they going to close the outlet out of Kachikawik to keep the watershed that much smaller? How are they prepping for handling storm events while this is a week or two that it might be tied up? Right. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to kind of answer from what I understand so far, and if, if we need to, you know, follow up with um, environmental and structural, I'm not sure we're going to get the right <laughs> answer. Yeah. Um, if I need to follow up with um, yeah. the town, you know, I, I, I definitely will further. But um, we've been working with the town because I know on, on part of Stevens Pond, I think there's a beach that's utilized. Um, so we originally were looking to draw down further, um, but we've modified that so it's a, it's less of a drawdown to have a lower impact on the beach. Uh, utilization during the season. It's great weed control, by the way, drawing the pond up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there is a, it wouldn't necessarily be capable of handling this flow. There is a uh, secondary bypass pipe. I think it's a 24 inch bypass pipe that may take some of that. Um, the overflow culvert structure may take some of that flow. Um, you know, I think there's the stop logs, I think, downstream of. Mill Pond, and then, like like you said, there's maybe some control upstream at the Lake Chichuit. Um, another another thing, obviously, you know, not if they're in the middle of of doing the resin, or you know, they just did it, but um, it could be the option to like you know flood the the excavation if they haven't done that work yet. Um, so that would be something we'd have to evaluate, you know, obviously further with the town on would they be willing to you know, maybe control the flow out of Lake Chichewick, um or flood the cofferdam, what would be their preferred, and then obviously, the con you know, put that in the, uh, the contract documents that the contractor would have to be aware of. Because I think that's the, that is the detail that we need to be understanding, because I think the, the actual project, from my, my perspective, is pretty straightforward. It's going to be that right when we think we have a good stretch of weather, we get one of those four inch storms. We get the September storm we got last September right. and the entire watershed comes at you and you now what? Right. And we, we've already seen downstream impacts from this very wa same watershed that were pretty catastrophic. Um, so the hydrodynamic analysis that was done on this, get a, it's, it's a line, so it's minuscule mm -hmm. loss of diameter, but you're actually improving the, the, co uh, the, the friction you know, pipe pipe by a coefficient, right. so it's going to move more water, even though it's less diameter, chances are. So, so it's probably a, a good thing that we're replacing this from a flow perspective, from right. what I understand. I think the, the stop logs downstream um, at the end of Mill Pond would still control the flow, uh, because it's, it's basically always underwater, um, under, I don't know, maybe 10 feet, of, well, I don't know about the top of the pipe. So I don't know that it'll change that too much. I think it's still going to be limited by the downstream. But in theory, otherwise you're right, it would, in theory, have a, um, a better flow. I think it's, is it the Manning's coefficient or? So, so I have a sensitivity with moving the flow during catastrophic events. So let's, we need to talk about that right. in detail before this all gets done. Right. So non-catastrophic events, you're going to put a coffin dam in. You're going to secure it over the perimeter and at the base. Yep. You're going to pump, and I need to know how that's going to happen. You're going to need to pump that out. I need to know where you're going to pump to and what sort of controls are you going to put for the discharge from that dewatering pump because it's going to be moving muck, muck and sludge right. um, you know, through that's accumulated through the centuries. Um, so we're going to need to know how you're handling that and where it's going to go and, and how you're going to you know, keep it clean. And whether, right. you, know, you just need to tell us more detail on that. Okay. Um, do you have an idea of how the... Uh, is it, is it a curtain or is it a true coffin dam? They're driving pilings. Uh, so, no. what, yeah, one of the issues here is, I, um, well, we have plans from when it was built, so it was a pretty long time ago. But there is relatively shallow bedrock, um, so we are thinking that the contractor may not be able to get the type of embedment they would need for doing sheet piles. So what we're showing is um, like a porta dam system that it's actually a, this one's either ten or twelve feet tall, but um, it's basically like a frame system with a curtain and then so part of the, the reason for the large impact the area that we're showing is that curtain um, extends out yeah I think 
Is it's it like a mesh lining. Right. So the entire footprint that you see on the plans wouldn't all be like area in the dry. Most of that would be just accounts for the, the mesh liner that is going to be rolled out um, from the quarter dam setup. Um, and if I could just note one thing about the dewatering, um, we mentioned in the NOI that, um, and it will be, you know, means and methods of the contractor it could change, but generally the dewatering would be, the water would be pumped through uh, a silt sack bag to get rid of the, the sediment um, from the sediment laden water, and then that would be discharged um, into from Stevens Pond into Mill Pond to continue the flow, but after passing through um, that silt bag and also typically surrounded by um, like erosion contr sediment controls like um, straw bales or something similar uh, to effectively. So it's a fine line between you guys dictating means and methods, which I know is tough, but the same token, we need of course, to issue yeah. order conditions that mm -hmm. addresses exactly what the contractor yes. has to do. Mm -hmm. So ours is going to be performance standard based and it's going to be you know, prior to mm -hmm. prior to the kickoff meeting and on site, mm -hmm. is they need to submit to us and we need to approve yeah. what that method is. Mm -hmm. um, and you could probably just more schematically show where those locations would be along mm -hmm. the roadway. Mm -hmm. Roadways can be closed during this whole process. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. right. You have plenty of opportunity to string dirt bags along the roadway and, and let them filter out. Right? Yeah. Uh, I'm all set for now. Um, what do you expect to be the uh, the time period that that the uh, coffer dams will be up and and you know you're cleaning then you're then you're lining and then you're breaking down what do, what do you expect front to back so the the coffer dams will actually in, need to stay up um, a little bit longer to do the concrete new head walls uh, repair the stone work adjacent to them as well and backfill at least um, the road to the point where the, the high water is now um, so I think right now we're, we're looking at maybe like a 60 day period for the whole project um, now towards the end of that that some of that's going to be the repaving and the, and the, the sub drain work so it may not be that the coffer dam is actually up for that whole 60 day period um, and certainly once the the relining is done um, you know, you'd still need to work in the dry at least for uh, the, the concrete work and the head walls. But there may be, at least from the, from the storm perspective, options for flooding the coffer dam at that point if needed. 60 days then is what I'm hearing. Yeah, I think at, that at most. would be the worst case. Yeah, okay. Um, and then new head walls. Um, I don't recall. Are the are the head walls the same size or larger than what is already there? Uh, they're the same size. Uh, you mean height? As well? I believe they're the same size. Um, Bank. Well, actually, length of length. length yep. of yeah. Us, yeah. Yeah. They're the same size. Yep. Okay. I have no other questions. Uh, no questions. I got more of a question for Amy. Would they? They've noted several times in the report that. Since it's a culvert replacement, they're not subject to stream crossing standards. Would they be subject to stream crossing standards otherwise? I mean, we've we got if something going were, in between two ponds. They were taking out. And I, I hate the fact that we are refurbing 70 year old culverts. I've realized the permitting burden that puts you under I mean, once you build a bridge across that thing if we got to do stream crossing. But we're so much better served by a three-sided box at the bottom of this thing. And the reason we're not doing it is because the giant pain in the butt it would be to go through us and DEP. And great expense. And yeah, just all this money we're adding head walls and doing pavement reconstruction for a 70-year-old 48-inch RCP. I've seen 70-year-old 48-inch RCP. Blowing some plastic through it is going to extend it for a little bit, but... Ugh. So would, would they be subject to it? If if they removed it? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yep. And would the, I've would, actually I've actually argued to the contrary in one with DEP. 
that between two ponds, the culvert itself is even though to it's the maximum extent that's practical considering downstream constrictions. So and minimizing, it would have to be and minimizing impacts, but I don't think it's I don't think it's subject to uh, stream crossings because in essence you really it's acting functioning as an equalizer between two impounded yes. bodies of water, even though it's named Catrickle Brook. Doesn't take on a brook characteristic until it gets further get downstream. Okay. So I didn't and think it of doesn't. It from that in a, angle. I would certainly argue it is something like out of control. Yeah. Mm. I would agree with you. I just, I just hate the fact that we're going to put millions of dollars on top of seven year old culverts. That's, it doesn't seem like a good use of my tax money. Well said. <laughs> Noted. Well said. I, I mean, I don't disagree. I, I understand the alternatives. It's the exact one I would have written for the client that doesn't want to do put consider putting a bridge over the thing. But that, I mean, that's really what it boils down to. It's a permitting burden you'd have to go to. Yeah. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think the permitting and the cost. It, I, I think the OPCC uh, that we did on this is probably about. Well, it depends on the span. You know, if. Uh, if it's a 10 foot, 20 foot, whatever it is, could be double the cost from what we've seen on other projects. I'd, well, I'd only want you to match flow that you get out of 248. So that wouldn't even be that big of a span. I wouldn't want you to change that because we're calling it out of control, see? Right. Yeah. That 100 year analysis, did it overtop the road? Said it only went up by one half. I had a hard time believing that a hundred year storm does it. So, so you want historical data? I can tell you I've seen it over top the road. Too. I've okay, seen it, yeah. I've seen Absolutely. that road underwater more times than you can count. Okay. Yeah. You're not quite a hundred. Not quite a hundred. Not quite. <laughs> not quite. Um, so the existing drainage off the road kind of just goes into the ponds and you're installing new drainage and pipes. How does that outlet in the banks? Is there, how is that bank protected? Um, so there's a there's a detail on one of the sheets here that shows the um, the pipe is I don't remember the diameter. It's like four inches. Might be, yeah, I think it is four. I, I think it's towards the beginning. Um, maybe maybe That's it. four sheets in, or give or take. It's a little bit. Uh, is it, is it it's further up? Sheet four? Is that the one? Yeah, I think it is, yeah. Four? It's, okay. it's got so the that, stone and, yep. Yeah, yeah so yeah, that, that's the, the cross section of it, but I'm, I'm looking for how it actually Discharge discharges. Uh, okay. What does that pipe daylighting look like? Because it says it it daylights on the slope, but um, we, just, we just want that slope to be protected. Is this the you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. follow up question. I agree. I don't see where it goes. You said there's a sheet that shows that? Sorry, what was that? Four. Oh, yeah, sheet four. Sheet four? I was looking at sheet eight. I'm sorry. Yeah, I just hope that it's allow it to drain into Stevens Bond. doesn't really. I saw the I saw the section. I was looking for. I was looking on sheet eight, and the plan view is where I thought I might have found it. Yeah, I didn't really see anything. I don't know. Unless I missed it. Yeah, so th this this is a town uh, detail that we got actually from from DPW. But um, my understanding is the intent, and we can certainly follow up with this, is that it is essentially a subsurface drain or sub drain, and it terminates subsurface at the uh, the bank there. Mm -hmm. um, so it, I don't, don't believe it's intended to like outlet physically into the pond, but I can confirm that. Okay. So what's its purpose? You're you're shoulder drainage? You're looking for a location. Yeah, so detail, yeah, look right? where it where it discharges to, like kind of. Um, right. Yeah. So the yeah, location so and the deta uh, a oh, detail. Oh, yeah, location and where it's shown on the plan. So okay. plan and plan view. So yeah, so instead of like the section view, like an actual yeah. outlet. Yeah, so, the, okay. I mean the, the section okay. view is helpful, but showing it on the plan as well. Okay. Yeah. So currently. Um, it, I think it just kind of ponds on the side of the road, and so mm -hmm. the the thought is without necessarily putting in like a catch basin or mm -hmm. storm drain system to basically give 
the water space to to go that's not the road uh, into the, the perforated pipe with the the gravel um, and you know give it a I guess maybe slightly faster path towards the recharge but yeah I mean some elevations would be helpful too just to understand if um, you know if there's opportunity to add some additional filtering stone for mm -hmm removing some of the pollutants from the road and stuff like that. So. Okay. Yeah. What I would like is that the, the low end of that, where it's going to overtop and get out of that trench, we'd like to not see a bunch of erosion right at that point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. True. Right. Okay. Hmm. Amy, uh, what do you think about the, the wildlife habitat waiver request? Um, I, I think it's appropriate. Um, considering for especially well for the bordering land subject to flooding it's roadway mm -hmm. and roadway shoulders um, for the bank um, it's in well in my opinion it's nothing spectacular and it, I don't think it harbors any particularly um, quality habitat. Um, there may be a, I think there might be a small beaver dam up against um, the mill pond side of the roadway, um, but, but that's not gonna be touched. So um, I don't know. I, is it is it a natural heritage review? Is that no. is that what no. you no. no. Okay. It's just that it's beyond the the threshold of bank disturbance under the okay. the usual performance standards. Okay. So That's just my opinion. On, but, you know. with, with me when I started we I swapped shot on Alpha Dam, dewatering, emergency flow accommodations and then I stopped trying and didn't say so what do you do at the end what's your final restoration look like coffee dam comes up you've yeah. got the floor of the you just walk away and let the silt silt settle you keep a, a, a flotation boom in to control silt for a few weeks until things calm down I need you need to tell me what's the final end game on this uh, before the project's done and how do we measure success So they're, they're not triggering land underwater um, threshold. Threshold, but it's just the the hundred year floodplain and uh, the bank. But I meaning the volume in the area on either side of the coffin dam is below threshold. Is that what you say? No, inside the area of impact or inside the right. Inside the copper dam, right? What? For 40, land underwater. Yeah, 4,500 square feet is the proposed maximum extent of, of impacts to land underwater, including the area that's actually going to be in the dry and the area that is going to be um, aligned with like the mesh liner from the port dams, which is below the 5,000 square foot threshold right. Right. for the performance right. standards and for one water quality cert. So. But, Joe, your point is well taken. Regardless, we want to know how that resource is going to be returned. What, what is the threshold? 5,000? 5, 5,000 square feet. For, yeah. for land underwater. I, I say regardless, we want to make sure we, we no, know I what know. they're doing. We, yeah. And that's too, that's too close for comfort. I mean, the coffin dam yeah. could be just simply misaligned a little bit on either side, and so you're over 5,000. And you find out about it after the fact. So I think we just put the precautions in place up front. In the end, we still want you to preserve the water quality when they leave, and that's not that difficult to do if they if it's stated up front. So let's find out. Well, is there any anyone in the audience that has questions? I'm getting there. Okay. Uh, let me go there. Let me do that now. Any <laughs> abutters want to be heard on this? Or public? Okay. okay. Anybody want to file an amicus brief? Okay, no, nobody answers. <laughs> um, what do you need? Two weeks, four weeks? There, there's been some questions uh, that might require some work. Um, 
So we do have a DEP file number, but I haven't seen any DEP technical comments on this. Um, so I would want to follow up with DEP as well to see if mm -hmm. they have any mm -hmm. comments. Um, because I, I ha didn't see any on the portal, but I haven't received an email. Um, we could put you on for, for the 10th, and if you want to continue, you just call in and continue and uh, go I to the. That, go, works. that would give you two weeks, and then if, you, if two weeks doesn't help, yeah. bump to the next two weeks. I think this the questions that we have to answer can be, I mean, from my perspective, yeah. the environmental perspective, two weeks is enough time. I don't know about the engineering side of the yeah. engineering information. I would agree. Yeah. We, have, have a conversation with the town and just kind of make sure that we're on the same page with that mm -hmm. sub drain and detail yeah. elevations, all of that. Um, so you want uh, two, it, four the, weeks? The trouble I with our every fine. two weeks is that we want our information seven days prior to the oh, that's true. right the meeting. So it's really one week. True. If that's you really true. want to get real about it. Well, <laughs> we always want to be real here. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so it's impossible. I mean, it's. I mean, so, I'm not so, going to be able. So four to weeks. Finish. The second meeting in April. Uh, that's just yeah. giving us time to absorb yeah. it. And right. Yeah, because I guess the we would want to submit anything by next Wednesday. Right. Okay. Yeah, which probably is not realistic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You could. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. So. So moved. To the April. What is it? Twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. Yeah. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's unanimous. 24th. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, enforcement order violations. I don't see how we can have either hearing. Nope. Since both of them were continued earlier. Continue both. Uh, we have nothing else on the agenda except for adjournment. That's right. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's unanimous. We stand adjourned.